Hi guys, have you been? It's so nice to have you again. And welcome to our today's um, worship. And uh, first, let me thank the praise and worship team. Thank you team for taking us uh, into the presence of God with a beautiful uh, worship session. Be blessed. And so we are going to pray before we begin our lesson. So let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, <clears throat> we give you thanks. We pray, Lord, that as we begin our lesson today, that your presence will be with us. Holy Spirit of God, fill us, fill each boy and girl, all the guys uh, watching and listening to this uh, lesson through all our um, hope media platforms that Father, they will hear your word and hide it in their hearts that they may not sin against thee. And so Lord, use me for your glory. We thank you and we honor you. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen, amen. So please get your Bible, get your book, get your pen so that as the Spirit of God will be ministering to us. You'll be able to note those um, uh, words and those truths and lessons so that you can later meditate on them. And so before we begin our today's lesson, let's recap what uh, was taught last week. <clears throat> Could you talk to the person you are seated with? What was the lesson? <laughs> Yes, our lesson was on love, to love. And what did you learn? Yes, we learned that um, Jesus is love and he's commanded us to love others and to love him as well. And uh, when we talk of loving others, we love our enemies, we love our neighbors. And where did we get our memory verse from? Who can remember? Uh -huh. Our memory verse was from the book of John, chapter 15, verse 12, which says, This is my commandment, that you love one another. Yes. And uh, verse 13 was, Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. Now you remember the memory verse. I hope uh, you continue meditating on that. So, as we come to uh, today's lesson, I want to ask you a few questions. Uh, have you ever been angry? Yes, angry, anger, angry. What, what had happened? And did you eventually uh, forgive whoever had offended you? Or maybe you're the one who had offended the other person and then they, they offended you back and then you ended up getting mad did you forgive? So today, I'm going to give you a story of a guy uh, just like you, who also had um, an incident like yours. So listen to this story. So Jeremy burst into the house, slammed the door, shut. His mother was in the kitchen. So Jeremy, went straight into his bedroom, locked himself in, and remained there for some time until he calmed down. Uh, his mother later went to him, and uh, they spoke about what had offended him, and his mother uh, reminded him on the importance of forgiving others. And actually, this is the story that Jeremy told his mother that actually two of his friends had made fun of him simply because um, Jeremy had made a mistake uh, while uh, they were playing soccer. And actually that mistake costed the team because they ended up losing. And so they made such fun of him that he really got offended and he planned to get even with them. And so for the next few days, Jeremy was planning and planning of how he was going to get even with his friends. Remember, Jeremy 
knew Jesus as his savior. And at the same time, he had learned many verses about forgiveness. So he knew that he needed to obey the Lord and forgive those who offend him. But in here, he was busy doing what? Planning of how to get even with his friends. So guys, do you think uh, Jeremy needed to forgive them? Remember, he was really hurt. Yeah? And by him forgiving, was he going to show uh, the light of God? Or by him not forgiving, what was that going to mean for him? I'm sure by now, you must have guessed what our topic is for today. Yes, some of you guessed right. So our topic is forgiveness or to forgive. So if you're writing, our topic today is to forgive. So the question is, what is forgiveness? Yes, yes, it is simply to pardon your offender, to pardon that person who has offended you. That is forgiveness. Yes, and today we are going to look at a Bible story told by Jesus uh, about forgiveness. And even as we're going to look into this uh, Bible story, just think with me how God, in his infinite love, uh, thought about forgiveness. Um, to think that Almighty God, perfect in holiness and infinite in knowledge, can cancel all our sins, past, present, and future, and uh, cast them forever into the sea of his forgiveness, it is remarkable, right? And even uh, forgiveness is also needed for healthy relationships uh, with others because of our nature of imperfection. And it, and it is impossible not to offend others. Remember, it's not possible as we interact with others not to offend. No wonder today's topic to forgive. So then I will take us uh, straight to our Bible story. And our Bible story is from the book of Luke chapter 5. Open with me, Luke chapter 5, verse 17 to 24. Are you there? So we are going to read together. So Luke chapter 5, verse 17 to 24. The Bible says, one day when Jesus was teaching, some Pharisees and teachers of the law were sitting there who had come from every town in Galilee and Judea and from Jerusalem. The power of the Lord was present for Jesus to heal the sick. Some men came carrying a paralyzed man on a bed and they tried to take him into the house to put him in front of Jesus. Because of the crowd, however, they could not find way to take him in. So they carried him up on the roof, uh, made an opening in the tiles, and let him down on his bed into the middle of the group in front of Jesus. So when Jesus saw how much faith they had, he said to the man, your sins are forgiven, my friend. The teacher of the law, the teachers of the law and the Pharisees began to say to themselves, Who is this man who speaks such blasphemy? What is the only one who can forgive sin? Uh, Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them, Why do you think such things? Is it easy to say your sins are forgiven you or to say, Get up and walk? I will prove to you then that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sin. So he said to the paralyzed man, I tell you, get up, pick up your bed, and go home. What a lovely story. Yes. Of friends 
who took their friend to be healed by Jesus. And Jesus did what? Not only healed him, but forgave him his sin. And Jesus did this to prove that he has authority hmm, to forgive sin on earth. Isn't it a wonderful thing? So, um, what then comes to mind is, where does sin come from? That this man is brought to Jesus for healing, but the first thing that Jesus does is forgive his sin. Are you asking yourself that question too? Uh -huh. So the Bible tells us that uh, sin comes from our hearts. Remember, we are naturally sinners. We are born sinners. That is, it is innate, it is inborn. We are born sinners. And so Jesus, forgiving this man his sin, he wasn't wrong. He knew this man needed forgiveness. And so uh, in the book of um, Mark chapter 7, verse 11, uh, to 23, the Bible says, For from the inside, from a person's heart, come the evil ideas which lead him to do immoral things, to rob, kill, commit adultery, be greedy, and do all sorts of evil things, deceit, indecency, jealousy, slander, pride, and folly. All these evil things come from the inside, a person, and make him unclean. So see, sin comes from our hearts. That is where it originates from. And then the question then is, if we are born sinners and we are prone to sinning, who can forgive us? Who has the authority to forgive? Uh -huh. can, you, can you talk to the person you are with? Who do you think has the authority to forgive? Right. Jesus has the authority to forgive and he forgives us our sin. And we get this from the book of Luke chapter 5 verse uh, 24. What we have just read from the Bible story we just read. Uh, it says, but that you may know that the son of man has authority on earth to forgive sin. He said to the man who was paralyzed, I say to you, rise, pick up your bed and go home. Jesus has power to forgive sin and to forgive us for that matter. So then, if Jesus has forgiven us our sin or has power to forgive us our sin, do you think we have an obligation or we have a role to play in forgiving others also? Remember when we began, we said it is impossible not to offend others as we relate with them on a day-to-day -day, uh, basis. So then, what is God's expectation uh, of us uh, in terms of forgiveness? For him, he has forgiven us. When we run to him for forgiveness, he does. But what does he expect us to, to do? So, <clears throat> uh, Jesus expects us to forgive others as well, those who offend us. But there is what what could be the reasons why we should uh, forgive others is one is that Jesus commanded it. Yes, he commanded us. Surprised? Yes, we get it from Matthew chapter 18 uh, uh, from verse 21 to 22, which says, Then Peter came up and said to him, Lord, how often will my brother sin against me and I forgive him? As many as seven times. Jesus said to him, I do not say to you seven times, but 77 times. Those are so many times such that you forgive this person when they wrong you, you forgive them. If they wrong you again, you forgive them. God wants us to forgive them such that even when you remember that offense uh, after you have forgiven them, you don't feel the hurt anymore. You may not forget the offense, but... The beauty about forgiveness is that after you have forgiven them, even when you remember, it doesn't offend you. It doesn't hurt you. Yes. And then reason number two why we need to forgive is that we want to follow Jesus' example. Jesus is a very good example 
of forgiveness. He forgave us. Remember when he was hung on the cross, he said in Luke chapter 23, verse 34, and Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And so Jesus forgave us. So we are following that example. And then the third reason is that Jesus forgives our sin. Yes, he does. When we run to him any time of the day, to him, regardless of the sin that we have done, whether big in our sight or small, he forgives. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 32 says, Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ forgave you. Yes, he has forgiven us, so we have a duty. So those are three reasons why we need to forgive. And so you might be asking yourself, and if I don't forgive, what's the big deal? Apparently, <laughs> it is a deal. <laughs> you need to forgive. Let me give you three reasons, or maybe four reasons why you need to forgive. One, um, it is an assurance of eternal life. Forgiveness, you see, since it is a command from God, when you forgive others, God will also forgive your sin. And you see, when God forgives our sin, we are, we are assured of eternal life. Yes, because the truth is, Jesus is coming back again to take us home. Will he have forgiven your sins by the time he comes to take you home? So we need to be ready also for his coming. Eh? So remember that. Number two, healthier relationships. Imagine if you are not in good terms with everyone, for example, you're not in good terms with your dad, with your mom, with your siblings, with your teachers, even in Sunday school with your pastor, how will you even live? You'll be sick. Because hmm? you won't have anyone to socialize with because the way God created us, we are social beings. So when we forgive others, we have healthier relationships. And when we come even to medically now, our studies have shown that there is improved mental health. Actually, Guys your age nowadays, even as we read in social media, many of of your of, of guys your age are going through mental health issues. Some are, are going through depression. And we have seen even sadly some that have killed themselves because of this. And imagine the Bible is reminding us that if we practice forgiveness, imagine our mental health will improve. And you know how? Because you will be less anxious. You will be less irritable and you won't be hostile to people. Yes. And then number four is that it will improve your health. Did you know that your blood pressure goes up when you're ever bitter? You're ever angry? Yes. You can ask your doctor if uh, you want to prove this. So, so when you, you forgive, you, you're healthier. Even your heart will be healthy. Even your self-esteem will be good because you'll be having a very uh, joyous relationship with other people. Mm? And even studies have shown that your immunity will be stronger. Imagine by just forgiving because then your heart will be good. Your heart will be healthier. So then your body will be working well. So see, it's very important to forgive. Not only for us to see Jesus when he comes back, but even for your own health as we serve Jesus and wait for his coming. So then, guys, having looked at this, you're asking yourself, how then can I apply it in my life? Two ways, quickly, of how we are going to apply it. One, if you haven't received Jesus, one thing that you must remember is that it will be very difficult for you to forgive others. Imagine because it's only Jesus that allows you or gives you the strength to forgive. Remember we've said we are born sinners. We are naturally sinners. So our nature is to sin and sin and sin and not to forgive and not to forgive. You see, but when Jesus comes in, the equation changes because then he gives us the ability to forgive. So could you be there and you're saying you haven't received Jesus and you really want to receive Jesus in your heart? Please repeat this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I ask for forgiveness. I pray, Lord, that you may come into my heart and be the Lord of my life. 
God, thank you for dying on the cross for my sin. Thank you because I am your child. I receive you in my heart. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much if you said that prayer because you're now a child of God. I mean, the family of God is so big. And so, so that you don't feel lonely, we encourage you, you tell your parents or your guardian or your Sunday school teacher or your uh, patron, CU patron, even school or even Bible club in your neighborhood so that they can teach you the word of God and then they can also help you to know how to pray. And then, but for the second category of how to apply this is you could be saved already, but you've been harboring anger and unforgiveness in your heart. Maybe your dad offended you and you, 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 you haven't forgiven him or your mom or your sibling or your friend. Think of that person that you've been holding hostage in your heart. You've refused to forgive. You need to forgive. You need to be healthy. Yeah? And you need to have uh, eternal life. So if you're there and you're saying, for real, I need to forgive. I'm giving you just a, uh, 30 seconds. Just whisper that prayer. The Lord hears and he answers our prayer. Just say that prayer. Forgive them. And if it is something they did to you, Ask God also to give you a heart to forgive them. Yes, and you can even go to them later and tell them, I have forgiven you for offending me. So 30 seconds. Amen, amen to that prayer. God has heard your prayer. And surely he's going to answer <clears throat> because he's a good God. He's not mean as some people have portrayed him to be. He's a good God. He hears the prayers of his children and he answers and he forgives. <clears throat> so that brings us to our memory verse today. Our memory verse is from the book of Luke chapter 5 from verse 20, uh, and verse 24. The Bible says, the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sin. It's very simple, right? So then, guys, as we come to the conclusion of our lesson, what then did we learn? Let's um, see if we remember what we have uh, just learned. So, why do we need to be forgiven? Mm -hmm. Talk to the person you are with. Right, because we have sinned, we are born sinners, right? And that is why we are saying, even as we remember the story of Jeremy, Jeremy, we asked ourselves, ourselves as we began, should Jeremy forgive his friends? So we can answer it here that yes, he needs to forgive his friends because God has commanded us to do that. And then the other question is, what is sin? Yes. Sin is anything we think, say, or do that goes against God's word. And then the other thing we, uh, the other question is, where does sin come from? We said that. Yes, from the heart. And uh, who is the only one who can forgive sin? Yes, Jesus is the only one. And even when we forgive, he gives us the ability to be able to forgive others. Yes. And then finally, our, the final question is, why are we to forgive others? We gave three reasons. One, he commanded us to. We need to follow his example. And the third one was because he forgives us. So, guys, thank you so much for staying with us uh, from the beginning to the end. So let's just do a um, closing prayer. Lord, we give you thanks. Thank you for every guy that tuned in and listened or watched uh, and followed this lesson. We pray, God, that as you've taught us about forgiveness, teach us to forgive in our hearts. And help us, Jehovah God, that every other single day that we will remember, God, that we need to forgive. For that is what you've commanded us. So thank you. Bless them. Bless everyone. 
We thank you for your good and your faithful Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. And so until we meet again, guys, from our end it is. Bye. Bye.